Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm James Holtz. Now, before we get into uh, the fishing portion of today's episode, I've got an announcement to make. Pat McSherry and I will be at the Gander Outdoors Forest Lake store May 4th. We're going to be just hanging out with anglers, uh, sharing fishing information, doing our best to help anybody that shows up get ready for Minnesota fishing opener. So if you're in the area, stop by again. That's May 4th, the Gander Outdoors store location in Forest Lake, Minnesota. We'll be there from 10 to 2, 10 a.m. to 2 in the afternoon. Look forward to seeing you there. So that brings us to the fishing. Uh, ice is coming off a lot of the lakes here in the upper Midwest, and that is one of my favorite times of year. And if you followed this show over the years, you know that one of the first states we travel to for open ice walleyes, South Dakota, the Webster area, where in the last few years we've been connecting with Marcus Quam, owner of Real Therapy Guide Service. He's one of my favorite guys to fish with, and this destination is one of my favorite places to hit early season for a very simple fact. These are shallow lakes, they're sprawling, but they're not very deep. So once the ice comes off, they warm up really fast, and the walleyes found in these bodies of water just have a completely different attitude than what you find from walleyes in deeper natural lakes. So stick around, Marcus Quam and I are gonna be sharing some tips and tricks to put you on some ice out walleyes wherever you fish, here today on In-Depth Outdoors. How many days ago did the ice go off? I don't know about here, maybe four. It's 49 degrees already. Four or five days? I think the, the walleyes are going to be pretty happy. Our weather's just been bipolar. Yeah. The winter that wouldn't end, and you got spring earlier than we did for sure. Oh. And that's plenty warm enough for those fish to be spawned. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if a bunch of these fish had dropped eggs and the sun stays out, we'll crack 50 degrees today. It's just amazing how quick these shallow lakes warm up compared to our lakes back home. Yeah, I think that's why we have good fishing right away usually. Yep, it's one of my favorite places to be. As soon as you say the ice is out, I come running. Here we go. I'm going to assume these fish are going to be just right up on the reeds, yep. the, the grass. Fish? Yes, sir. You can get a pretty long cast, you get that wind at your back. <laughs> We're out here in South Dakota with my good buddy Marcus, and it's really windy. Come on, Phil, we just barely hooked. Snoot hooked. You might want to go back to your uh, end of the boat, Marcus. You'll get them back there. <laughs> the wind's pushing us so fast here. Yeah, it's just the wind pushing us. Yes! <laughs> and it came off. <laughs> Teamwork, buddy. I appreciate it. Oh, this wind's making it tough. Uh, I would go so far as to say really tough. <laughs> <laughs> We've already drifted about 50 yards from where I hooked that fish up. Here you go. Look at that. There's your fish. Appreciate we'll get it. That. That, that is a really nice spawned out female. Ice has been off this lake for less than a week. Water temperatures pushing up towards 50 degrees. And they're spawned out already. What I love about this, we come out here, these fish are so aggressive. You know, back in Minnesota right now, right after ice out, if you could fish those walleyes, they'd be real lethargic. Temperatures don't jump up as fast here in South Dakota. Already 50 degrees, and they're looking to eat. See ya. That's a good start. You know, when you're doing the shallow water fishing out here, 
in South Dakota or anywhere, uh, in my opinion, the number one tool that an angler has at their disposal is side imaging electronics. You know, when you're up in uh, two, three, four foot of water, that traditional, you know, 2D down looking sonar, I'm not going to say it's, it's worthless, but the chances that you're going to get your boat over the top of a school of walleyes in four feet of water and being able to actually identify that those are walleyes, pretty rare. Uh, those fish sense the boat, they move out to the sides. And that's why side imaging is the right tool for this job. So what we've been doing is just scooting around these shorelines, mortaring along about three miles an hour, using that side imaging, mark those fish, put some casts on it. In fact, I got a um, say thank you to the camera guy because he's the one that pointed out that fish I threw at it and caught it. So pretty cool scenario there. Go back up on there and hit him again? Yeah. All right. It feels good to be back in the boat. <laughs> Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandleGM.com. In pursuit of what lies beneath, Okuma Fishing Tackle is the point of connection between angler and opportunity, giant pike and muskie, drag screaming salmon, and deep bodied lake trout, hard fighting bass, and the elusive walleye, all pursued by anglers that demand the smoothest, longest casting reels, and perfectly balanced fishing rods, engineered to perfection everywhere, every species. Okuma Fishing Tackle is inspired fishing. For the bass that thinks it's a bulldog. For the walleye that thinks it's a freight train. For the tuna that thinks it's a torpedo. For the tarpon that thinks it's a tarpon. You need the mono that thinks it's a braid. Suffix Advance. New advanced mono with HMPE braid molecules for strength, abrasion resistance, and low stretch. Suffix Advance. The mono that thinks it's a braid. Fish. There Fish. you go. Kaboom. That'd be pretty shallow, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna guess maybe two and a half feet. <laughs> That's where walleyes need to be right now, though, to make babies. This thing is. I haven't got a look at them. Feels decent. Oh yeah. Look at that. They're spawning. They're following them. Look at. Look at it. You see that? Yep. There's like three of them with that female. <laughs> That is so, they're, they're still there. Time your scoop, Marcus. You got it! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and that's what's going on right now. There's some shenanigans going on down there. You don't see that every day. My guess is the camera couldn't see what was going on down there. I could because of how high it was. You could because of your glasses. But there was like three or four of them chasing that female. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different way to get a double. That's a wild kingdom kind of deal, everybody. <laughs> All right, here's the female. She's just about done from the looks of things. Man, you could have limited out in a scoop there. <laughs> All right, nice fish there. Let that one go. And here's the, uh, here's the male. Girls are always getting us boys in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. First time I've ever seen that done. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. awesome. Just throwing moxies. Um, it's an orange chartreuse core plastic here. See if I can get this back. Real nice flexible tail on that bugger. Obviously the fish are up spawning. That was that fish was just finishing up, but I mean we didn't really do it on purpose. No. What's the legality of 
We didn't keep it, so it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can't dip net walleye. <laughs> but if I get a chance, I'll do the same for you. Thank you. That was cool. Got him. Oh, you're way out there. <laughs> I I'm like it. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> it's a ways out there. <laughs> I'm going to need some time. I just put that one up in the stratosphere. <laughs> oh, more of them with it. Same deal. God, they're nice fish, aren't they? <laughs> here we go. This Good is a male work. here. Male? Yeah, it's a big male. Look at the hump on his head. Chunky monkey. There's that fish. And look at the hump on that head there. Yep. Big old chunkers. Get him back there. Man, that, that one had another fish with it when that was coming in too. They're busy up there. I think they're way up there, Marcus. They are. I they're, mean like super, like two feet. That was probably, I don't know, three cranks and one paused in. And I got that bite. So that's way up there, but. I was using the Pulsar, which is a little bit different than the Moxie that James is using. This has got the paddle tail on. You know, for being this early in the season, the water's so warm, I'm able to work this bait just a little bit faster, kind of swimming it through the rocks more than just dragging it. In-depth outdoors, spot on the spot ID. On today's Spot on the Spot ID, I want to share some ideas that we put to work uh, any time we're looking to quickly find fish on the type of uh, body of water that we're fishing out near Webster, South Dakota for this week's episode. Uh, now, just a quick description. Uh, these are not deep lakes. I think the lake we fished, max depth is about 14 feet. There's not a lot of main lake structure. And uh, to a large degree, a lot of the shorelines all look the same. It's basically farm field comes down to water's edge. So how does a guy go about quickly finding these fish on a body of water that just opened up? Marcus didn't fish us yesterday. We just came out here and we're able to get on fish quick by using um, mega side imaging. In my opinion, it is the number one tool available to uh, an angler, particularly when you're looking for fish in shallow water. It's early in the season. Everything's gonna be right up on the shores. So how do you go about finding these fish? Uh, we know they're gonna be spawning. Uh, we know they're gonna be looking for rock. So what we did is we uh, deployed side imaging. Um, my settings, if you're really not getting comfortable with side imaging yet and uh, you want a reference point, uh, my sensitivity, I'm running it somewhere in the, uh, the 10 to 12 range. Uh, my contrast is right about that 10 and then my speed is at six. So it might not work for your setup, but it's a good place to start. So we're in five feet of water, uh, shorelines in this direction, and this is an example of what you don't want to fish. Uh, you can see a lot of this is just smooth, sandy bottom, and it starts to transition here into last year's old weed growth. It's slimy, it's not the area where these fish are gonna spawn, and you can see it, it looks real pillowy. And all that is is last year's weeds that were standing up have now fallen over, and they're starting to decay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually show you uh, the actual screen capture of the spot where we caught uh, most of our large fish. Uh, over my shoulder here, you're gonna see uh, this is facing to the shallowest portion of the lake. This is a shore in this direction. Out on this side, again, it's just that just featureless sandy bottom. But as we move to the left side of the boat, you start to notice the scattered rock and it's clean. The weeds are not up and mixed in around the rock. And what we had was groups of walleye, large groups of walleye, spawning in these areas. In fact, this is a set of rocks that I would cast to, and I literally wanted my jig to hang up on those rocks before I would pop the jig loose. And as I would come clear from that rock pile, I'd get hit right there. So if you're out looking uh, for early season walleyes, whether it's in South Dakota or once the season opens here in Minnesota and Wisconsin, this type of scenario will ring true. Use your side imaging, that mega side imaging. Uh, we're lucky to have this tool available to us because what you see on your screen is exactly what's going on down there in the water. So look for a scenario just like this. Even though there's weeds close by, you can see the rocks are clean. Uh, they're not matted over with last year's weed growth. That's the type of area that, that are gonna really attract walleyes. Get your jig and plastics, get your crankbaits up in these areas, and you're gonna catch a lot of fish.
Available in six technique specific models, the new Dead Eye Custom Series Spinning Rods from Akuma offer tournament grade performance at a price all anglers can afford. Built on SCT blank technology featuring a dual helix carbon fiber wrap, Dead Eye Custom Series Rods offer an ultra responsive blank that will handle the biggest walleye on your favorite bodies of water. Find the Dead Eye Custom Series at your favorite sporting goods store today and see for yourself why Okuma is inspired fishing. For this season, Beef Fish and Tackle adds the rib fin to its Authentex line of soft baits. All Authentex soft baits offer a deadly combination of shape and action and are available in fish catching color patterns not offered anywhere else, including six new fish catching color patterns that make Authentex soft baits the bait of choice for trophy walleye and bass anglers everywhere. Authentex soft baits. Find them online at beefishandtackle.com or at a quality sporting goods retailer near you. Marcus, how much better is this than ice fishing? A lot. <laughs> I don't know if I can put a number on it. Marcus guided more than a few days this winter. He might still be a little crispy from the experience. Got him way out there. Here we go. <laughs> These fish are so, so shallow, we can't get the boat. I mean, we got to make use of the wind right now to get the cast far enough, but we can't get the boat any closer because it's so shallow and so rocky. That's why the walleyes are up there, though. Wind's turning everything up, makes for great spawning conditions. This is not, this is as big of a fish, Marcus. Okay. Well, should I get ready if there's three of them? <laughs> I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm having a good time. This is absolutely like my favorite way to fish. Thank you, sir. There was another one with it. Was it really? Yep. <laughs> you know, I'm not counting on that happening ever again. That was pretty cool. And that one woofed it up. These baits we're using, really good soft plastic and that they got a very active tail. You know, the water temperatures are warm enough for spawning, but the fish aren't gonna be chasing baits down necessarily. So having that bait that gets a lot of action, moving them real slow, that's kind of the key. Bright patterns, because as you can see, the water clarity is almost on the verge of pour. But that uh, auger sty uh, style tail, you don't have to move that bait through the water very fast and it really kicks gives off some flash color and vibration. And that's what the, wa the walleyes are keying on. Let's do that all day until the batteries run out of juice, man. <laughs> Sounds good to me. There you go. Hey, knew we had to have at least one in here, right? Yeah. Just right off the edge of those rocks. Better fish, I think. Oh yeah, that's a nice female, and oh, did that thing just eat it up. Just wolfed. Thank you. Good work, sir. That felt good, she cracked that hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I decided to switch it up and put a little bit of a bucktail on. But I got the back half of a moxie. Uh, even when I'm running hair, I still like to have a little bit of plastic on. And just did some contrasting colors there with some black and chartreuse orange core. There we go. 
beautiful fish, Marcus. Just pulled up on this point, a few casts. Here's the result. Get this one back and go after another one. Super, super duper. Thanks for the net. <laughs> Got him. Well, that looks like a nicer fish. Oh, yeah. Spunky one. Uh, I think, yep. Ooh, <laughs> your uh, contraption just popped out there. Thank you. It's a stout fish, huh? She's a beaut, Clark. I love this when uh, this water's just starting to warm up like this. These fish get charged up. Get her back. Thank you. All right, and I'll show you here what I'm doing. So I'm just grabbing a moxie. I'm using uh, the chartreuse orange core. And it's a little bit longer than what I need. So I'll kind of size it up here on this jig like that. And I'll take this section and I'll pinch about a third of it off. So that's all I'm using. Here's kind of what it looks like on the jig. Uh, when this feather's wet, it doesn't look quite as good right now as what it does in the water. So all I have here is just that little bit of tail just that auger just kind of going through the water on the fall and that hair is just puffing out with this being up the uh, shank a little bit further. Definitely looks like a wet cat out of the water, but in the water, it's got a lot of good action that you can only get from the hair. But this rubber definitely helps for me. For the bass that thinks it's a bulldog. For the walleye that thinks it's a freight train. For the tuna that thinks it's a torpedo. For the tarpon that thinks it's a tarpon. You need the mono that thinks it's a braid. Suffix Advance. New advanced mono with HMPE braid molecules for strength, abrasion resistance, and low stretch. Suffix Advance. The mono that thinks it's a braid. Available in six technique specific models. The new Dead Eye Custom Series spinning rods from Akuma offer tournament grade performance at a price all anglers can afford. Built on SCT blank technology featuring a dual helix carbon fiber wrap, Dead Eye Custom Series rods offer an ultra responsive blank that will handle the biggest walleye on your favorite bodies of water. Find the Dead Eye Custom Series at your favorite sporting goods store today and see for yourself why Okuma is inspired fishing. At Aluma, we're in it for the long haul. That's why we make the longest lasting, most rugged trailers on the road. Flatbeds, bike haulers, tilt trailers, and enclosed. If you have a lot to move, we've got your way to move it. Our lightweight aluminum trailers will handle even your heaviest loads. At Aluma, we are right behind you with an industry-leading five-year warranty. Because every trip and every load is valued. Fish. There's one. What do you think you got there? I got that uh, good kind of feeling kathunk. Uh, definitely a walleye. It's going to be a good one. If you don't mind, Marcus. Thank you. Come here, ladyfish. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. The average size fish is just awesome. Come here. Settle down. And I was wrong. Maybe that's why he's so ornery with me. I called him a girl. That's definitely a boy. All right. This time of year for me is uh, basically the cure for what ails me. It's been a long winter. <laughs> the winters are always long. And this is uh, proof to me that uh, I'm going to survive another one. <laughs> See ya. Send friends. All right. So what's been doing it for me, Marcus has got that little variation there. I'm fishing a quarter ounce BMC Moon Eye Jig and then that uh, moxie. I've shortened it up a little bit. Took a couple of rings off the top end and then just threaded it up normal-like. Um, and then, you know, on the rod and reel, just our standard uh, Okuma Helios spinning rod. That's a medium. And then the uh, Okuma Helios uh, spin and reel. Uh, and I am using a braid. We've kind of bounced back and forth today between the braid and the mono. Uh, mono doesn't quite have the sensitivity that the braid does, and there's just so much dead vegetation in the water if you let that jig hit the bottom that we're sticking to the braid. Just gives us a little bit better feel, more jig control. But obviously a very basic setup. 
fish. Well, that's a good one. That fish just throttled it. I'm coming. That buck and rubber's taking some of our better fish today, bud. Yeah. I like your creativity. <laughs> Have fun and catch more fish, right? Oh, that thing is gone. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. you. Got it. Oh, boy, that thing just woofed it. Oh, there we go. Good work, sir. Another nice fish. This one spawned out here, and she's ready to put the feed bag on, and I'm glad I put my bait in front of her face. <laughs> She was in murder, death, kill mode. <laughs> yeah. There's fish. There we go. All right, here we go. Ah, that's a big head shake there. Feels like a good one. <laughs> oh, big head shake there, buddy. Big boil. Stay hooked up. Show your face. Yes! There we go! Yes! Yes! yes. <laughs> you know, I just said you're probably not going to catch a 28 incher out here. It ain't that, but it's <laughs> awful close. <laughs> That's a dandy. Yes, sir. Woo! Oh, look at that one. That's a fatty. South Dakota gold right there. Somebody took a bite out of her fin at some point. Heck of a fish. Had that jig mid-boat, was just kind of hopping it back, pop, 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 and just crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna unhook this fish, fire her back. All right, I'm gonna pop that one out of there. There we go. Heck yeah, exclamation point. And back you go. That is a chubby. See ya, oh yeah. Something about catching a walleye out of two foot of water. Pretty cool. <laughs> Doesn't get old, does it? No. So that brings us to the end of today's show. I love it out here in Webster. Uh, if you're out there watching the show today and you feel like you need to knock some rust off your game in advance of the Minnesota Fishing Opener, make sure you give Marcus a call. He's a wonderful guy, a tremendous guide, just a ton of fun to fish with. And that Webster area, it's one of my favorite destinations, hands down. So before we go, I wanna remind everybody that this is the final week to enter the Dream Trip giveaway. Go to our homepage. Uh, indepthoutdoors.com look for that dream trip giveaway logo get yourself entered we're drawing the winner on may 1st so thanks for tuning in everybody we'll see you next week for more info on the latest fish reports gear recommendations and hottest techniques connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on facebook at indepthoutdoors and if you enjoyed today's show be sure to let our sponsors know